I would just like to share with you my projects, my first projects for the month of June. The first one I've made is a lovely bunting banner and it says the word create and it's made using quite a lot of different trims and laces from Tresors Deluxe, some from my May kit, some from my June uh, package and also just some that I've had from past months as well. And they're mainly it's mainly a collage of laces done in two different styles and they're the two different styles there very similar but just using different laces on each one on the end I've used the beautiful Battenberg lace flower and you will see that I have made very good use of the bling trim how gorgeous is that piece of bling and that is on this lovely piece of dangle trim from my June design package and that goes in between each of the buntings. I've used some chipboard lettering and painted it a silver pearlized colour and used some German glitter glass on top of that and it has a beautiful sparkle to it and I really hope that is showing up on the video. So that's the first project and I will just get my second one. And this is the second project I made. This is a lace notebook or notebook holder. And I will show you some of the laces I've used on it now. And these are some of the laces and trims that I've used on the notebook. Of course, some of the things used in both of my projects I have I've used them all, so I can't show you them unfortunately. So I've made these two notebook holders just using the same concept that I used for the bunner banting which is just using some scrapbook paper covered in fabric so it gives it some stability but it also has um, a softness to it and I really like using the two together and I'll just show you the inside and I also have a tutorial following on how to make these little notebooks so that is the inside of the notebook and it has a pocket at the front this particular one has three little booklet inserts in it and a pocket on the back there and that's the lovely laces from Trezor's Deluxe and on the cover there and that was the last of this particular lace that I had so I used that one on the spine and I think they turned out very pretty and I hope you like them and if you'd like to watch the tutorial on how I made them just keep watching if not thank you so very much for stopping by and I hope you like what I made bye bye so what I've done so far is I have cut a piece of uh, scrapbooking paper and I've basically cut it in half so that's six inches uh, so I've got a, a 12 by 12 piece of scrapbook paper cut it in half and then I've just scored at um, doing it this way the four inch mark and then the four and a half inch mark and then the eight and three quarter inch mark and the th uh, nine and one quarter inch mark so I'll just show you that don't worry about that one down the bottom um, that should be four and a half there so that's where I've scored it and then I've just um, sort of, you know, found the center and where that last score line is, I've made it into a point. So that will be my envelope finish. I've glued it to my fabric of choice and I have another piece of fabric here to go on the other side. But before I do that, I'm going to cut around the edge and fold it up where the folds are just um, because once I get this on, I won't know exactly where that is so I'll be back once I've cut that out so I've glued the fabric to 
to one side of my scrapbooking paper and the scrapbooking paper I've used is just one out of a paper pad that I would probably never use um, by itself and it's not too thick like a cardstock and it's not too light like paper okay so I've just I've bent that like that just so that I can feel it once I've glued my other piece of fabric on um, the fabric I'm using it's it's one I picked up at a thrift shop or op shop quite some time ago but as you can see it does have a you know it frays quite easily so because of that I'm gluing it on but I'm also going to go around with a zigzag stitch but that is not necessary if your fabric uh, doesn't have a problem with fraying and I'm just using a craft glue to put my fabric on but you can use like a PVA glue or anything like that just make sure the fabric that you're gluing down uh, isn't so thin that you will see the glue through it because that that's not a good look either you could use Mod Podge too if you wanted to but I don't I don't actually own Mod Podge, so I don't know how that works one day, I guess. Okay, so making sure you've got the right side up. A bit there. And then give it a good smooth down. And then... Okay, yeah, make sure you get it all on properly. Um, and then you can cut it out so that it's the same as the other side. Okay, so all my zigzagging has been done around the edge of my little envelope. And I originally was just going to make little envelopes, but um, as I started putting it together, I thought, you know, that'd make a nice little notebook. So we have our little um, spines creased out, just, you know, every so often give it another fold. And okay, so what I'm going to do now is put in my pocket. I just have to remember how I did the last one because the last one, um, you know, you learn from your mistakes, don't you? And I know, uh, I know there were a couple of things on there that I should do everything in the same order because, you know, we learn from our mistakes and, um, hopefully if when we make it again, we make a better job. So this is a gorgeous lace from Trezor's Deluxe and I got this in my May design team package and it's a lovely wide lace so I'm going to use that inside here as my pocket um, and see look here's another instance I could have actually put it there before and zigzagged it in with it but I didn't so what I'm going to do now because I glued the other one but I I'm tending to think a little bit of sewing would strengthen it a little bit more so what I might do now is just um, I might sew it that's not to say you have to because obviously not everybody sews but uh, you know if you do why not Oh gosh, hang on. I'm just going to put this here because I don't want to pin it. I'll just put that there to hold it in the right spot. And I'll just do a straight stitch this time. I won't worry about a zigzag because that's already, that's already done. Okay, 
now that's guaranteed not to come apart, isn't it? Yep, that's wonderful. Um, I'll just go around and trim it up now. Okay, I'm going to keep that piece as a scrap because they do come in handy if they're about that size. So, but everything needs to go in the bin. Uh, I'm not going to sew it down here and here, mainly because um, that's where my book will be put in anyway. Um, I didn't really want a sewing line there. Uh, so what I might do is just glue. Mm, just thinking, didn't really want a sewing line. So I may just put a bit of glue under here to keep that down because I don't need that as a pocket. There we go. Stringy glue. And that should dry really nice and strong. Okay, so that's our insert done. Um I have this trim, this is out of my own stash, and I'm going to put it inside like that. This has like a almost champagne kind of colour to it, which is really nice. And this is perhaps a little bit darker, but I, I like the overall look of it together. Uh, I think I'll start at the point here. And I have to be careful with this trim because it actually comes apart quite easily if I don't um, glue it once I've cut it. And once again, just using the fabric glue. So just running the glue all around the edge. And when I get to that corner, I'm just going to take it a little bit further because I need to sort of bend the trim around there making sure I've got the right side up which I haven't oh, they're very similar and they're both shiny it's just that on one side okay no I think they did oh well if it's that hard to work out the right from wrong, I don't think anybody else is going to notice. <laughs> Unless they're a perfectionist and they know things like that, I really don't think it's going to be a big deal. Okay, so just easing it around that corner piece there. Just carefully under part and there. Ooh, just a bit. Didn't quite trim that lace underneath as far down as I would like it. Okay, now I'll just continue around. With this corner piece here, I've got a little loop right on the end there, but I just want to get rid of it so that I can um, join up the other side. So I've left the edge part, but I've just cut the loop off so that when I... Uh, when I put this piece on, 
it can just slide like that and I'll cut that end bit off as well. Actually, that's a little bit messy there, isn't it? So I'll cut that off as well. So I'm left with something like that. And now I can run my glue along and around the corner because I need to ease that in. that right up close like so that makes this point nice and tidy like that and then easing this around the corner so that looks rather tidy as well it's always nice just gluing the rest down. I can't really afford to make any mistakes because that's all I've got left. Um, and then right on the edge here, what I'm going to do is uh, uh, pull the, you know, pull that one out. And that will. How are we doing this? Okay, same as the other side. Just cut the last loop off. That. And the same over here. Uh, so that will go in like that. And that will go to there. My next good purchase will be new scissors, a couple of different pairs. It's a bit frustrating when your scissors don't work very well. <clears throat> I've seen the Tim Holtz ones, they look wonderful. Yeah, they're very very sharp though so you have to be careful okay it's straight as and I have to pick it up and see it this way sorry Tidy it up. This one's a bit long. Let's see if they're not sharp or I don't want to unravel at all. That would be the last thing we'd want. And that should hold. Okay, so now you've got you know nice even corners there. I'm just um okay so that's basically the inside done <clears throat> um the outside 
side now and we want this part which what I've used for that is some of this beautiful trim from Trezor Stilux. I love this. I really do. It's, it's just beautiful. And how I want to do it is with our crease line. I just want to take it across like that. Okay, now this is slightly different size to the first one I made, so I need to be careful, maybe, uh, maybe like that. Okay, just... Have a look. So that will go like that. Like that. Now I'll probably cut that bit off there as well, right on the edge, see that little bit, and now I need to make sure I can do the other side, which will be Go like that. Yeah. Looks about right. And if you're worried about the edges of your laces fraying or anything like that once you've cut it. I think there is a product called Fray Stop or something like that that you can use but I always I also find put a little bit of fabric glue where you've cut it I mean you don't have to with every lace or trim but just some if you feel they may unravel a little bit if you put a little bit of fabric glue on it, it should stop that and keep the lace, once it's dry, the lace will still be quite, you know, soft and not crispy or anything like that at the edge. It's just an idea anyway, because nobody wants things unraveling. You know, especially if they're not going to be glued down that little bit. If they're just sort of left out in the open rather than glued to something else, um, you don't want them unraveling. Okay, that should. That should be okay. Let that dry for a moment. Okay, it doesn't take long for these things to dry. And I think that will come off that part there. A little bit at the end.
Okay, so that's our little flat part done. The next part is. Oh, where did I put it? Oh, here we go. I'm going to use. One of the beautiful butterfly blinks on the front here, just to add a bit of pretty sparkle. Um, I'm just going to cut those back pieces off and I will use some craft glue for that, although the fabric glue is probably strong enough um, to hold it there anyway. It's pretty good stuff, that fabric glue. Be generous with your glue. I actually left the little bits on on the last one and sewed it on um, but I really don't think that was that was necessary it was only because I was going to try something else um, that I did it that way but I think because <clears throat> this is done this way it should be fine Okay, so that basically needs to dry for a while before I continue. So now that that um, butterfly is dry, I'm just going to put some trim around the front cover and I'm going to be using the top of this gorgeous trim here. This one here. There we go. I'm going to use the little bit along the top and that's what's so wonderful about these laces and trims from Tresors is that you can use every little bit of them. You can leave them as one but you can also just cut them up and play with them and you get so much use out of it. So I have all my trim put around the edges there as you can see around the three sides. And what I'm needing to do now is make some pages for inside before putting my binding piece on like that. Um, I also need to put my ribbon on to close it. So I'll go and cut some pages to size and um, insert those. I won't insert them on the video because there are so many videos showing you how to do your pamphlet stitching and you know you don't need another one from me so I will be back in a moment. So there's the papers I've put three booklets in as you can probably tell and they're just um, inserted and I've put three holes I just made a little card and basically just copied that on each of them and threaded it through. So now I can put my lace on my spine and I'm gently going to pull that up a bit because I, I put that on beforehand and because it hasn't been stuck down for very long I'm still able to do this quite easily. Um, without damaging anything. And that, just make sure I need it over a little bit more to about there. Okay, so to that one there. There. And there. Oh. And the longer you leave it, of course, the harder the glue sets or the stronger the glue sets 
and it's more difficult to get things off. So if you find you've made a mistake with your fabric glue, you know, in those first couple of hours, um, it's quite easy to take it off and fix it up. But if you wanted to do it the next day, it may be a little bit more difficult and the chances of damaging your work a little bit, um, you know, it could happen. covers up the threads on the back there it closes just nicely then there'll be a bow of course so once you're happy with that then I just go back and re-glue our trim on you fold the spine and glue it down it makes it a bit easier because it glows it sort of dries in the spot that it's needed to dry in and of course I forgot to do something before that I forgot to cut myself off some seam binding that should be enough and insert it before I glue things down so this seam binding is fairly stiff it's not I like the softer one for some reason this I find this must be two different types and this one is quite quite stiff um, that and that's that I'll sit there and I need to put some seam binding here now put a little bit to hold it as well not too much and then just to finish that part there off I have a tiny little bit of this beautiful pearl trim left um, so I'm going to use this This is certainly a very well used piece and that will go, will go there like that. Mm, I need to trim that up a bit. I put it a bit too far down. There we go. There we go, and that'll just finish the inside very prettily. There we go. Like inside, like that, with little do I have a tag here? With little um, pockets. 
in the front and the back where you can put some pictures or you know whatever in there. Let's dry. Mm. Actually, I'm not going to tie that yet because I want that glue to set properly. That looks a little bit crooked, doesn't it? So there we go, a little notebook made with beautiful laces and trims from Trezor's Deluxe. Um, that's that one. And that's the first one I made. The only difference in the two is uh, the little trim around the edge, but I ran out of this one and this one also was one of my own. This one has two signatures in it. Um, and because I thought, oh, I could have fit another one, that's why this one has three. So two lovely notebooks from Trezor's Deluxe Laces and Trims. Thank you so much for joining me today. Bye-bye.